Hello and welcome back to an installment of Pokey Fodder. What I want to do today is we got a, several, a lot of interesting new figures. It wasn't a large edition, but it was a very interesting addition to the to the boosters and to Pokemon. And what a trend that I'm noticing is early on so we'll, we'll say the first couple months of the release of the game the first few months we'll go we'll say the first six months how about that so for the first six months of the game we had two banners per month maybe sometimes a third banner and we'd have just a plethora of new figures to go through and that was great and all but at some point i even brought up the comment of well, at some point you're going to run out of figures. Everybody's like, no, no, no. There's there's over 800. We haven't even gotten to Gen 7 yet. Whatever have you, as far as excuses go for why that was sustainable. But in my head, I'm like, well, you're releasing so many figures each month that like that's not sustainable. And eventually you're going to sooner rather than later run out of figures for the, the, the game. And then all you're going to be doing is buffing up figures and changing up wheels and things of that nature and i feel like the last probably december definitely january definitely this year definitely january and february but even in december i feel like they're they're not just pumping the brakes but they've hit the brakes as far as how quickly they're releasing figures and i actually think that's good for the health of the game what you're starting to find is they'll release a few figures They'll balance a few more. And then the meta may not have this broad sweeping change in one booster, but you get more pieces to a puzzle. Think of it that way. Each deck is a puzzle that is six pieces and you have to figure out what six pieces out of the 300 something different, 400 something different Pokemon that have been released in the game, you make to make the best puzzle possible. And with that, they've now been focusing heavily on Gen 7 the last, gosh, I don't know, since Sun and Moon came out for the, the DS games. And we have more of that with the Ultra Beasts. And what I wanna do today is I wanna go over, I'm gonna go over the wheels of the Ultra Beasts. I'll probably skip Nihiligo because well i'll touch on it but for the most part i'm not going to go real in depth because we had that one i've got a video on nihiligo already but what i want to focus in on is buzzwool and uh formosa go over their wheels a little bit and then i want to give you kind of a playbook of how to run these figures because don't take new decks in the league and try to figure them out on your own because you will like i did lose a lot of rank and it'll be very very frustrating so what i want to do is i want to kind of give you a little bit of my playbook and remember this is not one size fits all but hopefully you can take what i've learned and maybe you can even improve on it because let's be honest i'm not the best pokemon dual player in the game i kind of have a, a general overall knowledge but as far as thinking strategizing there are people that are just they're so far ahead that i don't even know what i don't know if you know what i mean so the first thing we want to do is we want to go we'll just jump into fusion no particular reason why it's just an easy way to get there and we are going to go with formosa now remember my formosa as you can see is level 10 so your wheel is not going to look exactly the same this is a bug fighting type it is 2 MP and it's a ultra beast. In this Pokemon's first battle after moving from the field, moving to the field, any effects of the battle opponent's ability to increase or decrease damage are nullified. And this Pokemon gets plus 1 MP for each Pokemon in ultra space to a maximum of 4 MP. Keep that in mind. And one thing that I suffer from and if you watched yesterday's video you'll you'll know this and if you've been watching me for any length of time you'll be like yeah that's totally true 
I don't always pay attention to the details. And what ends up happening is like with yesterday, I didn't look at my opponent's plates. He had a counter attack and I stepped off my goal and allowed him to win when I was pretty much in control of a game. Same thing goes with abilities. It's the details. I cannot tell you how many times I've completely even forgotten that Formosa has the, uh, this first ability of um, the battle opponent's effects to increase or decrease attack is nullified for the first attack. Well, that makes a huge difference because if we think about it, now we have Beware, which is going to make you do 50%. You have Lunala that you do 50%. You have Coco, which does plus 30. And that's kind of a big deal. All the Megas, and this, I haven't tested this out against Megas, but I know with like Scissor, when you do Metal Coat to get the evolution, it will negate the Megas abilities to get their plus damage. So I'm gonna go out and, and until someone tells me differently, I'm gonna say that Formosa also negates the Megas additional damage. I took my low sweep, which attaches a minus one MP marker to the battle opponent. It's a 31 wheel slice is mine. It's 36 at the base level. To me, that is Formosa's weakest attack. It has a four dodge, a 24 ice beam for, that hits for 67. If this Pokemon is knocked out, the battle opponent becomes frozen. That is important when we look at the makeup of the deck that I'm running it with. A four miss slice, and then a 33 wheel slice of call signal. Move one of your Pokemon that is in ultra space to a point two steps away from this Pokemon. Now, let me let me just let me touch on Buzzwool and then I'll come back to that. So if we go look at Buzzwool, Buzzwool is also a bug fighting ultra beast. It has the ability of ultra pump up until it engages in its first battle after moving to the field. At the start of your turn, this Pokemon may move to a point by moving over an adjacent Pokemon instead of using an MP move. Again, it, attention to details. I've been running this deck for, you know, since it came out. So, you know, I would say Friday. So all day Thursday and half the day on Friday. I've not once used this ability, nor have I even looked at it as being an ability. Completely slipped my mind as if it never existed. This may be very useful. And I apologize. I can't even tell you how it works because I haven't used it. I've watched feature duels. I've not seen anybody use this ability. And, and that, that just goes to show when new figures come out, if you're going to use them, make sure you know what they can do. That's paramount in being successful. And it's little things, you know, I talked about yesterday, little things, attention to detail that will help your game improve. This is yet yeah, another one. If your Pokemon has an ability and you don't know what the ability is, that could be something that's causing you to lose games that maybe you should have won. Just keep that in mind. And I'm not calling anybody out specifically other than myself. And I'm, this is a learn by example type video. So we have a 24 wheel slice of ice punch. It hits for 53, pardon me. I didn't finish reading about the ability. Your turn ends. This Pokemon deals plus 29 attack damage for each Pokemon in the Ultra Space. Okay. Now we have Ice Punch hits for 53. It's a 24 wheel slice. It freezes your opponent if you lose on this attack. A four dodge slice. Mine is level five, so it has 40 for superpower. It's actually 36 wheel slice at its base. And you will have an additional four miss on this Pokemon as well as Formosa. So keep that in mind if you are running a level one, two, three, or four Buzzwall or Formosa. And they are split. So it's not one big eight miss. It's broken up into two. And that really comes into play when you look at status effects, i.e. confusion. That's where that will come into play the, the most obvious way. Um, you, you probably aren't going to land on that 
1% slice of one miss very often. But if you do have confusion, that one miss slice becomes significantly larger. It has a four miss slice and then a 24 blue attack called Chest Repulse. Attaches a cracked marker to the battle opponent if the battle opponent spends an attack of 30 or more damage. I can tell you, again, in the two days, the day and a half that I've been running this figure, that has not once come into play. I've never rolled the blue against an opponent that hit for over 130. Now, where that comes into play is I thought this would synergize really well with Scissor initially because of the cracked markers, Scissor and Mega Scissor because Mega Scissor can banish. And it, it just, it never came into play in any way, shape or form. And that's something to know. Often a figure will have an ability that on paper looks like it should synergize really well but if you take it into battle and you're playing game after game after game and it is never becoming an issue it, it you're never executing whatever condition that is then maybe that's not a good synergy or it's not as good a synergy as as you initially thought another where another place where this comes into play is with plates if we look at the deck that I ultimately put together with my Ultra Beasts. Um, where I have Scoop Up, I, t I originally had the um, counterattack plate, and here was my thought behind it. If Formosa gains plus one MP for each Nihiligo that gets booted out into Ultra Space, and of the Ultra Beasts currently available, only Nihiligo goes to Ultra Space. The other two just go to the PC. Keep that in mind when building a deck. But what was ended up happening is I thought, wow, counterattack, if both my Nihiligos get sent off into Ultra Space, that's gonna make my Formosa 4 MP with counterattack, that's gonna be 5 MP. Like I can go all the way across the board. Well, in, in practical application, it just wasn't coming into play Ever. And so with that in mind, I thought, you know, it's probably a better plate to run scoop up with Suicune in order to eliminate status effects than it is to have this once in a hundred, once in 500 game plate of counterattack that may not even win you a game. So keep that in mind as well. What I've done is I have to have a runner. I went with Coco. It is uh, like it's the best runner in the game. And until they come up with something better or something that counters it a lot harder than anything that counters it. Right now the counters just kind of get in the way and there are a lot of things that'll knock it out. But Coco is still very hard to, to navigate around. You have to always know where, where Tapu Coco is on the board. So I've got that for my runner. And then I've got my Suicune in there because the two new Ultra Beasts have ice moves. Now those aren't gonna come into play all of the time, but if you look at my deck, Nihiligo has a poison purple, but Formosa has an all white and blue wheel. Coco has a gold, blue, and white wheel. Buzzwool has a white and blue wheel. So there wasn't a lot of purple in my deck. And Suicune has Sheer Cold, which will KO figure. And if I happen to get a Frozen Pokemon opponent, I do have the possibility of banishing that opponent. So that is how I came up with the concept of this deck. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only deck that this will work in. If you look on feature duels, I'm seeing a lot of Ultra Beast. You can come up with something else. But what I want to show you is, I'm, oh, I'm going to tell you first. Here's how I was playing the deck when it was first released. I was using my Nihiligos back on defense because they have ginormous blues. If we look at this, 41 blue, that's the same size as Zapdos's gold at level 10. <clears throat> Pardon me on that. That's the same size as Zapdos at level 10. 
28 of stun pour, 23 of white tentacles, four miss. Like to me, this is a defensive Pokemon. If I roll white tentacle and lose, I'm gonna take control of their my opponent. If I run stun poison, I'm giving them weight six. And then the nice size blue just said fodder. This is a defensive Pokemon, put it on the back row. So what I was doing in my early matches is using Buzzwole and Formosa as my attackers. And then remember I had Scissor in here. So Scissor, Buzzwole, Formosa, Tapu Koko, those were my attackers. Well, looking at Buzzwole again, like 113, it doesn't beat much. If you think about what is one of the most meta decks out there, it's Sogaleo, which hits for 100 and 120, and then typically they'll run an Ori Choreo with it. Well, Buzzwole can beat the 100, but it's gonna get sent back to the PC. It can't beat the 120 at all. And then if we look at Lunala, there's no gold. Buzzwell isn't gonna be able to beat Lunala. And then if you look at Deoxys attack form, 140 plus Oricorio is, you know, you could be doing 145, 146, even higher. Buzzwell can't do that. He, he can't compete with that. And then if we look at Formosa, Formosa is actually even weaker at 103 and 67. What ended up happening, as you can imagine, is when I go into league, I was putting these two figures out on my front line. My opponent was not even needing to use plates, just walking down through my figures. And then I'm stuck with two Nihiligos on the back line. And let's be honest, if I need to knock somebody off of an entry point so that I can bring figures back on the board, like how, how much there's not a lot of power here and it was creating problems i was getting really frustrated so i talked to supa and supa has you know he's been in one of my videos we talk on discord quite often just deck crafting thinking of different things coming up with strategies um throwing game ideas against each other to see hey help me out with this help me out with that and we, we settled on this deck. And the thing he said was, put Nihiligo on the front line. Weaken your opponents as they're coming down the field. And I was like, oh, because Buzzwole is going to gain plus 29 on its attack. So all of a sudden that 113 becomes 142. Well, now we're talking. Now I can get up and over in damage on Lunala. I can attack most Deoxys attack forms. I can hang with most Solgaleos, even with Oricorio. I was like, wow, you know what? You're right, okay. And then if we look over here at Formosa, Formosa is gonna gain an MP every time. So what ends up happening, the, the light bulb moment for me was these figures are better if I lose a Nihiligo. Now, I don't want to say Nihiligo is a suicide figure because it's definitely not. And if you lose both of them, being down two figures, that's going to be hard to come back from. Although, that is why I leveled up my Formosa's call signal to level 10. I put it all into the blue. So if I do happen to lose both of my Nihiligos, I still have a one in three about chance of bringing them back on a roll but I keep them back so when I set this up and I have a, a match that I want to show you that can kind of go through all this for you but think of it this way Nihiligos and Coco up front you've got status effects you've got uh, if one gets banished then all of a sudden your back line figures actually become stronger and then you've got your Suicune on the back line to heal status effects and should your opponent come through and get iced you're in position to potentially banish a figure 
that was what completely changed this deck around for me. And I actually, not bragging, but I actually went 4-0 with my, my Ultra Beast deck. Today, doing my dailies, and today is Friday when I'm recording this, using this principle. Now, I'm not going to say I'm going to win all of my games, and I'm not saying that the deck is completely broken. That's not true. Kind of far from it, actually. But what I want to show you is if we go into Feature Duels... I think it's on Spotlight. Let me see, it should be at the bottom, okay. So here we go, this was, I can't pronounce, but look at my opponent's deck. He's almost 3,500, he's got eight chain level, level 10 Deoxys attack, he's got Oricorio, he's got Sableye. Like that is a, a very meta deck. I'm gonna play this back for you. I will be stopping it as we go along. I'm on the far side, obviously. My opponent goes first, and I'm gonna open up with Coco into the middle of the board. He mirrors me, and I'm gonna, I'm not even worried about, we'll stop it here. I'm not even worried about matchups. Now, if my opponent had Tracheon, I'm in a world of hurt because I don't, everything I have has blue on it. And it, I, I don't know what I would have done had he had Tracheon, but he doesn't. And Tracheon isn't really a meta figure. If you run into Tracheon or Rallet, you're just going to have to get a roll. And that's kind of what that amounts to. But it's used so little that at this point, I'm not concerned about it. What I did is I didn't even worry about what matchups he possibly could throw at me. Because if I lose a Nihiligo it's okay. If I poison an eagle, uh, my opponent, they're doing minus 20 damage, which is only going to help my back row players. So he comes out with Poliwhirl. I take my Formosa onto the back line because it's a defensive figure. Bring my uh, Buzzwall out. And then I attack because he could hop over me, but he would have gotten surrounded. Unfortunately, I spin out of an attack into my myth and let him trigger the evolution into Poliwhirl. Oh boy, and here he comes. Poliwhirl comes down and just absolutely crushes my Tapu Koko. I go ahead and cover up my goal. He comes down and crushes my figure again. Now I'm not running goal block, so what do I do? I have to break out a double chance. And I go with Buzzwall because I'm doing plus 29 damage. Attack into him. I lose, but I ice him. So now he can't take my goal. I could have re-rolled there and tried to go for the knockout, but I chose not to. Now here I make a mistake. The mistake isn't that I win the roll. Hopefully it stops and doesn't keep playing on. Okay, what I should have done here is instead of going there and attacking, I could have come out from this side, gone into the middle and attacked into his Coco. What would have happened if he'd have rolled blue if, or if I had rolled blue, I would have lost the game now. So that was a bad play by me, not attacking Coco, but from where I attacked Coco. Keep that in mind. Uh, when you have a decision of a, to attack or where, of not to attack, where are you attacking from and is there only one angle to attack your opponent from is what i is what i took away from this so of course he's going to bring his doa down and tapu koko isn't much of a challenge for doa hopefully i can stop playback stop nope it's not gonna let me so because i have a frozen figure this is why suicune is in the game bam we get the good roll. All I had to do was roll, not dodge and not miss, and I was gonna knock out Poliwhirl. The fact that I got the bandage, the banish is just icing on the cake, and it looks like it wanted to stop there. So we will pick up the game. I am now confused, <laughs> and that actually helps me there, and it helps me there as well. 
So the confused Suicune turns out to be a beast, knocks out DOA, and now we bring Formosa back out to the back line. I'm carrying two Max Revives because I anticipate losing figures as, as the game goes on. I anticipate losing them. So what I did here is I could have backtracked, but if you've been watching me for any length of time, you know that I play way too defensively. That is probably my number one comment that people tell me is, Fodder, you play way too defensively. Another, not Redditor, Discord user, but another one of my Discord users brought up the concept of taking the lead. And I'm pausing the game here for just a second, but if you've ever played the game like Spades, and that's the best way I know to explain it. In the game of Spades, you're dealt 13 cards, I believe, and you make a bet as to how many tricks you're gonna win during that round of cards. And a trick is basically, if everybody plays diamonds, you play the highest diamond with spades trumping all of the suits, what ends up happening is, say you, you say you're gonna take five, okay? If you have a lot of one, you say you have a lot of high cards in hearts. So you have the ace of hearts, the king of hearts, the queen of hearts, and the 10 of hearts, okay? Well, since you have, and we'll say you have two other hearts in your hand, so you have five, six, maybe seven hearts. Well, what's gonna happen is your, your heart, somebody's not gonna have hearts. So you need to wipe them out of their trump cards, which are spades. And to do that, you wanna take the lead at some point and not give the lead back to your opponents so that you can pick up all your tricks. And I hope that this is making sense to you. Essentially, in layman's terms, taking the lead in a card game is where you control the action and everybody reacts to you so that you can get your desired outcome. And that in the game of spades, if I have a lot of hearts, I want to clean out everybody else of their spades so that then when I play my hearts that I'm counting on winning, nobody has a spade to trump that. And that's called taking the lead. When you can clean out your opponent's ability to stop you and you run through the rest of the deck making your bid or your bet, whatever it is. That can actually be applied to Pokemon Duel. And it was pointed out by a Discord user, and I apologize, I forgot your name, but I will, I will give you credit down in the description below. What he said is, if you think of this like a card game, taking the lead is what wins you the game more times than not. By playing defensive, I always let my opponent dictate or take the lead in a game, and I'm always reacting to their lead. So essentially what they're doing is they're wiping me out of all my, what would be my good cards, so they can dictate the flow of the game. With that being said, I hope that made sense to you. Um, and if it didn't, I apologize. Maybe it was a bad analogy, but it makes sense in my head. And if you came up with a card background, then that should make sense to you. So I could have taken my Tapu Koko and moved back and played defensively. I could have left my Tapu Koko where it was and covered my goal. Those would all be defensive plays. But instead, I wanted to take the lead. His Sable, I can't get to my goal, but I can threaten the win. I I've mentioned this before. I'm putting them on the clock. And right now the clock is one. If they don't cover their goal or knock out my figure, they lose in one turn. Does that analogy make sense? Because I hope it does. Right now I'm on a clock of two, but he's on a clock of one. So I have the lead in the game. I move to threaten goal. Of course he's gonna take his, his uh, Oricorio. I decide to attack because I'm on a two clock and I can get to my goal. I win the roll, and now again, he's still on a one clock. I'm gonna force him to react, and his reaction is to goal block. I don't really like the Coco into Zap matchup. 
It's not. I don't think it's all that great. He goes and threatens, gets the good roll, knocks out my Suicune, and now it's easy for me to cover up there. The, are you, guys, you guys are following along with this. I really hope you are. So we'll continue the playback, and then I'm going to stop here. So he's going to bring out his Coco, and I'm going to Max Revive. Now, I should have Max Revive Buzzwole, because Buzzwole is a better attacker than Suicune. My thought here was, if my Formosa gets knocked out, I want to have the option of um, banishing my opponent. But that, that's a little too risky, a little too gimmicky. Because I'm still missing a Nihiligo, if I bring my Buzzwole out here, Tapu Koko is going to have an extremely difficult time knocking that out. So that was a misplay. Also, what I could have done alternatively is because I have a swap spot. Does it let me? Okay. Because I have a swap spot here, instead of coming out, I could have moved my Nihiligo to this point here, effectively putting him on, an, on the clock of one again, two. Well, one, because I would have, I could have surrounded his goal with a swap spot. Does that make, does that, does everything make sense there? I could have swapped spot. If I, instead of coming out with a max revive, if I move Nihiligo here, then he presses down to there. I do swap spot, surround his goal, and then it doesn't matter if he surrounds my goal in the next turn. So two options of plays, and I did neither one of them. Probably both plays were better. And truth be told, I think moving Nihiligo right to the above and threatening the win was actually the best play possible with bringing out Buzzwole, the second best play, and bringing out Suicune being just ahead of doing nothing. <laughs> so my opponent is going to bomb down into my corner, attack my Suicune. It does work out for me. We do get the knockout. Well, not the knockout, but we don't lose. And then I'm gonna set up the surround that I could have done before. And had I threatened this earlier, I still would have been able to bring out Buzzwole and we'd have been in this position, but he wouldn't have had the option to attack into me and that would have saved me a potential to lose the game. He's gonna double chance again into my Suicune, I believe. I get the fortunate roll there. As long as I avoid his white attack, we are good. RNG was with me on this game, I'm not going to lie. We did get favorable rolls. I take over his entry point, and I want to stop this again. Okay, so if you look at the position I'm in now, ask yourself, what is my next best play? I'm going to tell you I'm, I'm almost positive that he attacks with Sableye. But think in your head, what is my next best play and why is it my next best play? As I hit playback, he does attack. And I'm gonna stop this again with a confused figure. So what did you guys come up with? What is my next best play? Because I'll tell you, if you say move Coco back, you're wrong. And that's what I did. I moved my Coco back and here's why it's wrong. The better play is move Sableye, or Suicune, back one. The reason why is because he's not bringing anybody off of his bench. He doesn't have the ability for anybody to come out. Nobody's threatening to come out. I gave up really strong position because remember, and this is what I wasn't thinking about. Remember, I have a 36 wheel slice of call signal and I'm missing a figure. He's going to have to attack either Nihiligo or Tapu Koko. He's going to have to attack one of them. If he chooses to attack Nihiligo and I get callback, I'm going to bring my other Nihiligo right here, get the double surround, and win the game. Instead, when I move my Koko out here, now it sets it up so he can freely attack my Nihiligo without any real effect other than he could lose his Deoxys, he would lose his Deoxys attack form, but he'd still have Zapdos out there, and he's still threatening my goal. 
And he does. He attacks with DOA. I roll a stun poison. He re-rolls me. And I get the blue. I just cost myself the game there by moving my Coco out of a favorable position. Now, it's okay, because now I saw his entry points covered, but the game's not over, and I could still lose, confuse, and to dodge. And at this point, another reason why I like Suicune and Scoop Up, as you can see, this is when I was running counterattack. At this point, this is what made me think about Scoop Up, actually is because since I am confused, like I have a 4% chance of hitting call signal. If I lose this Nihiligo, so say I had not rolled call signal and brought out my other one, if I had been knocked out by Deoxys attack form, I'm probably not getting them back. Whereas if I had had scoop up here, I could do scoop up, bring Suicune back out, and that's gonna erase the status effect off of my Formosa and allow me the potential to bring my opponent, my, my Nihiligos back onto the board because I would be down two figures at that point. I get the unfortunate miss, although it was fortunate in the fact that I didn't get confused and I didn't get knocked out there. I'm gonna bring my Suicune up and like I said, RNG was on my side for this match. Let's stop that there. Now, that was another misplay. And it's, like, these are crucial misplays because I am getting all the rolls. But if I'm not getting all the rolls, these are pretty big deals. Instead of moving Suicune back here, my better play would have been to move Suicune up next to Coco. Because my Coco is burned. Zapdos has a good matchup against Coco. If I move up here... Even if Tapu Koko gets knocked out, I can still take over the entry point. Um, it's just a much better play than going back there, where now if I get knocked out, all I can do is come out here. He's going to be able to bring a figure out, and I lose control of the board. I no longer have the lead, per se. I would be reacting to what he does. Of course, he's going to go attack there. I don't blame him. I get the fortunate melee melee wish, banish my own figure, and take the goal. I could have taken the goal with Tapu Koko as well, but just chose not to. So there you go. That is, through my own personal experience, that is the best way to optimize the Ultra Beasts that we have at the moment. They're not complete. I'm. And I'm, I'm very interested to see what else they come up with. Uh, more figures have to go off to Ultra Space. I'm sure of it. We don't have a runner yet. Uh, we don't have anything that hits super hard without the boost of losing a figure. So I'm interested to see what else they come up with. We don't have a gold attack on, a, on an Ultra Beast yet. But there you go. I hope, I hope that the, the information in this video makes sense to you. And then I hope that you're able to, you know, you don't have to copy what I do, but I hope that it triggers a light bulb in your head, whether it be, yeah, you know what? I really need to pay more attention to the details. That'll help improve my win rate. Or yeah, I'm running figures that should synergize really well together. They're just not. And maybe ask yourself, well, do they really synergize well together? And then just knowing your figure's abilities and how to play them has completely opened up a whole new door for me using this deck. Now, having said all that, if I lose the next four games, it's all trash. Don't even pay attention to what I said. Before I go, let's crack open this black booster. We want 50 Carmenite. Is that being greedy? Probably. More than five. How about that? We'll be happy with more than five. Ingot common. 10. We're happy with 10. That is going to do it for today's video. Leave in a comment below, what is, was there an aha moment in my video for you today? And if so, what was it? And what are you going to try to do better?
to help you become a better Pokemon Duel player. That's all I got for today, so until next time.